Well hello, it's Andrew again and this is uh, episode 37. The last couple of days we've been looking at the issue of the Sabbath and Jesus' um, response to the Pharisees and their deep fear-filled concern about what would happen if the breaking of the Sabbath as they saw what Jesus was doing took hold and their consequent desire to destroy him. Now. As a result of that, Jesus quietly moves away, and then we pick up the uh, pick up the text in Matthew chapter twelve, verses fifteen b, the second part of the verse. Many crowds followed him, and he cured all of them, and he ordered them not to make him known. This was to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah: "Here is my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved." with whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not wrangle or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. He will not break a bruised reed or quench a smouldering wick until he brings justice to victory, and in his name the Gentiles will hope. Now, it's been my practice over the last year or so to be using the new Revised Standard Version. I've used the NIV probably for the previous 40, 50, nearly 50 years, uh, since the late 70s. And the thing about it I discovered was that it becomes too familiar. One of the wonderful things about using the NRSV is that there are changes, and the changes are noticeable, and you think, oh, I hadn't seen something there before. With relation to this text, though, I prefer the NIV. And I checked it out with my Greek interlinear. I'm not a, a Greek scholar at all, but the interlinear helps. It gives a literal word-for-word -word translation. And it seems, which is more sympathetic to the original, and I would suggest that so is the NIV. Now, the New Revised Standard Version, which we read just before, starts with, Many crowds followed him, and he cured all of them, and he ordered them not to make him known. You got that? The NIV starts with, Many followed him. No mention of crowds, just many followed him, and he healed all their sick, warning them not to tell who he was. Now, what's the difference, you may ask? It it's pretty minimal. What I suggest is that the NRSV has a sense of globality about it. There are many crowds. He cured them all. It's all, it's all out there, and he ordered them not to make him know. Whereas the NIV is personal. It's personal. Many followed, and he healed all their sick warning them not to tell who he was. Who was he warning? He was warning the sick that he cured. He wasn't warning everybody, he was warning the sick that he cured. Now you may think, and if you've got both versions of the Bible, it's worth actually sitting with them side by side and having a look and just seeing what you know, just, just sit with them for a while. You may think it's a small matter. Well, I don't. It's tonal. It sets the feel of the passage. That new RS, the New Revised Standard Version, the RSV, puts it out there. The NIV, it seems to me, makes it personal. And I think this is closer to the intent, closer to the original, because it actually makes sense of Jesus' instruction not to tell anybody, and I'll get to that in a moment. This is about you and me. It's about your healing, your life, your future. See, the thing is that Jesus doesn't want a circus to result. He doesn't want television cameras. He doesn't want the paparazzi. He doesn't want a ticker tick parade. He's in the business of healing and empowering people. One person at a time. One individual at a time. And the sense of this is further accentuated by what follows, and that's that quotation from Isaiah 42. Now, the interesting thing is that the syntax is different. The NRSV puts the verbal clause first and the object follows. 
This accords with usual English in-text, syntax. He will not break a bruised reed or quench a smouldering wick. Establishes the order in our minds, asking, what's he going to break? Oh, a bruised reed. What's he going to snuff out? Or, sorry, what's he not going to break? Oh, a bruised reed. What's he not going to snuff out? Oh, a smouldering wick. The NIV, however, orders the syntax according to the Greek. A bruised reed he will not break. A smouldering wick he will not snuff out. It's the bruised reed and the smouldering wick that are first brought to the imagination. And thus those images linger. They abide longer before we are told what the Lord is not going to do to them. Try it for yourself. And I think you'll pick the difference. You might sit in silence for a couple of minutes with the differences of the text. And I hope you'll see what I mean. As I said earlier on, it's, it's tonal. It's about a feel. Now, I have this text in the NIV, printed and plastered close by me on my office wall. I've been the bruised reed. I've been the smouldering wick. There are times that it still happens. And I'm so grateful that the Lord put a stake beside my bruised reed to protect it. While its fibres repaired so that it was able to stand straight again. And to put his hands around my smouldering wick while he gently breathed on it, allowing the ember to burst again into a healthy flame. For me, this is personal. And I sense it's the reason that he instructs those he has healed, each one of them, individually, not to go broadcasting the news all about. He wants to be able to keep offering healing and hope. One bruised, brood, one, bruised brood, one bruised reed at a time. One smouldering wick at a time. To those the Father brings across his path. Another reason I have it beside me in my office is a reminder of the call on my own life. I can be quite bruising and crushing. I have the capacity to snuff out smouldering wicks. And the invitation to live according to the pattern of Jesus as one who protects bruised reeds and gently breathes New fire into smouldering wicks is key to who I want to become. May it be true for you also. Let's pray. Our loving God and Father, we thank you for the gentleness with which you regard each of us. The way in which none of us escapes your view. None of our bruises. None of the bits of us where the flame of life burns low. You see it all. And your immediate response is not to snap off that broken reed is not to snuff out that smouldering wick but to gently draw near and hold and heal that bruised reed to put your arms around it to just protect it to put your hands around that smouldering wick to protect it from the from the elements and to gently and watchfully breathe onto it so that life is restored. I want to thank you, Lord, that that's been my experience. 
and I suspect the experience of many of my brothers and sisters. May we be open always to returning to that place of healing which you offer us. And may we too, Lord, under your leading, under your guiding, under your capacity for giving us the gift of noticing, be people also that will seek to strengthen bruised reeds and to protect and breathe new life into smouldering wicks. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all.